He's the only name you'll hear on that day. What price will you bring when you stand before the King? Jesus is the only way. upon the water one sweet day. He healed the blind and lame, all glory to his name. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way. The truth and the life I'm here to say. He gave his life for me on the cross of Calvary. Jesus is the only way. He's the only this way, is the folks. Community Christian Assembly Church. And we meet Sunday morning at 10 a.m. in Manlius Center, New York. Now that's that little white church that's located between Fayetteville and Manoa. And so we would like to invite you to come out and to visit with us and to share with us. And, and we'll worship God together and our Savior Jesus Christ. Now we meet on Sunday night and Wednesday night at Shiloh Bible Church, Kirkville and Fremont Road. And Pastor Din is there, and we have a wonderful uh, Bible study, and we'd like to invite you to come there. That's Wednesday night at 7 and Sunday night at 7. Over and over and 
us make a joyful noise unto the rock, unto the rock of my salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy
Well, praise the Lord. Let's open up our Bibles this morning to the uh, Gospel of Matthew in chapter 3. And uh, the, we are going into a new year, uh, 2015. Wow. Wow, 2015. And uh, we have been uh, reading in the past, we've been reading about the prophecies and all the words leading up to the birth of Christ and uh, Christ born in the little town of Bethlehem and how the wise men came and the wise men brought gifts to him and so on and how Herod sought to kill him and uh, the angel of the Lord told Joseph to take your wife and your child and flee to Egypt and so he fled to Egypt and now in our second installment of this uh, story we find uh, the two main characters, John the Baptist and Jesus Christ himself, who were born under very unusual circumstances. John being born of uh, uh, a couple who uh, worked in the church, uh, Zacharias and Elizabeth, and they were well on in years, and so to have a child was very unusual for them. And this child was uh, not, he was not conceived of the Holy Ghost but he was filled with the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb. What a wonderful uh, 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 story that we have concerning John the Baptist. And Jesus Christ, Jesus was born of a virgin, the Virgin Mary, and grew to, into manhood. And so we have John the Baptist growing into his manhood, and we have Jesus growing into his manhood. Uh, in the, now we come into... Chapter 3, and we find that Matthew's story starts with the story of John the Baptist. And John the Baptist, here we have John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. It was called Judea at that, in that day. It was during the Roman occupation that the that the uh, area became known as Judea. And so here is John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John uh, uh, had his raiment of camel's hair and a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out he to Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan and were, and were baptized of him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. And so in those days, Crying in the wilderness 
Let's get back to our program, our message for today. So we, we want to stop right there for just a moment, and we want to talk about this, that we have been reading how the, 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 uh, uh, the uh, story of John the Baptist and what was John the Baptist's mission in life was only to be the preparer, the preparer. I wonder if God has... In these last days, someone who's going to come and prepare before his coming. It might be that we have some great uh, leader, uh, spiritual leader, who will come and and he will not he will not come the way we think. You know, like John the Baptist. John the Baptist was not born in a palace. He wasn't born someplace where he would get uh, recognition of the people. The, the wealthy people, the king at the time, and so on. No, John the Baptist was just a meek and uh, 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 poor man and that the Lord had called. And uh, here it says that he had a remnant of camel's hair and a leather girdle was about his loins. He didn't have any special clothing. He didn't have a special uh, uh, priest's robe or anything. He was just... 
just a, like a woodsman or somebody that was just is in the wilderness. And he was preaching and, and preparing people for the great event of the coming of the Lord. Here it says that he was preaching in the wilderness of Judea and he was saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, I want to read from Isaiah in chapter uh, 43. Let me find this first. In Isaiah chapter and 43. In chapter 43. And in verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Ye shall not know it. And I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Here it is, a way in the wilderness. God called the people, and that time he called it a wilderness. Did you know that today, that we are still living in that wilderness, that place where, where so many men are separated from God, you know? And if you had a little home somewhere, and you were, had uh, your family in your home, and your home was nice and warm, and so if you were to go out of that home and walk for a ways into the woods or someplace along the desert or someplace, and you looked around and you says, I'm in a wilderness, I'm over here. I'm not at my home. I'm, I'm not where I should be. I'm not where I'm supposed to be. And this is the position of mankind. Man was at one time at home with God. He one time had a wonderful relationship with God. But he lost that relationship through sin. And so sin had separated man from God and caused man to live in a wilderness condition. He was not at home. And no matter where you are, no matter how warm you are, no matter how comfortable you may feel, you are living in a wilderness if you are not living with God. If, you're, if God is not on your side. And we have another scripture that I want to uh, read from Ezekiel. And in Ezekiel, in chapter 18, I'm going to start with verse 20. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20, and we're talking this morning about uh, John the Baptist's approach to the people and how he prepared them by saying, repent, get right with God. And so... Today, the message never changes that God has the same message today that he had then. And so, let's look at verse 20. It says, The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked turn from all his sin that he hath committed and keep all my statutes and do all that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live and not die. And so here we have this particular scripture is this wonderful message from God and it is the key to having a relationship with God. If the wicked turn from his sins that he hath committed and keep all my statutes and do all that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live and he shall not die. Now, what does that tell, where does that leave us with John the Baptist? John the Baptist, you know, what was he preaching? He said, repent, change your mind, change your heart. And so, we read on, it says, All his transgressions that he has committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him, and his righteousness that he hath done, in his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. Have I any pleasure at that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his way and live? God has no pleasure in man dying and going to hell. God doesn't have any pleasure in that. Some people say, well, God enjoys or God loves to send people to hell. God doesn't send anyone to hell. When a man goes to hell, it's because he has refused to repent of his sins. He's re refused to recognize the sin in his life. 
But when the righteous turn away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doth according to all the abomination that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned in his trespass that he hath trespassed and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. Yet ye say, the way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and dieth in them for, he, for his iniquity that he hath done, shall he die. In other words, let, us, let me just say here, did you notice that the word iniquity is used? And this word iniquity is the word sin, but it is a Iniquity is a continual sin, a sin that you commit and you refuse to repent of that sin. You live in that sin. You continue in that sin. You enjoy that sin. Now, sin is enjoyable for a season. But when you measure it against the things that God has counted sin as a terrible thing, if you look at that thing and the punishment penalty and punishment of sin we have to repent of our sin we have to give it up but if we do not now let's take here what Ezekiel is saying here he says let's say a righteous man has repented of his sins and he's going on with God you know but he's tempted and then he gives in to that sin and he commits iniquity he commits that sin and he continues in that iniquity and in that sin and then he dies well Will, will he have to pay for that sin? Or does God not count the iniquity? Here we read that he's not going to make it. You're not going to make it. See what it says here? Let me read 24 again. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doeth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doeth, shall he live? And all his righteousness that he has done be not, not be mentioned. And in his trespass that he hath trespassed, and in his sin that he has sinned, in them shall he die. If you continue in that sin, you're going to die. We take this uh, a step further to John the Baptist, who's preaching repentance to these people. They are God's people. They are the righteousness of God. And yet they had fallen away from God, and they had fallen into sin. Like so many people today in our nation, America, this nation was founded upon Christian principles. I don't care what the President of the United States says. We, uh, this nation was founded upon Christian principles. The people who came over here originally were Christians. We may not have liked their Christianity. We may not have agreed with all of their Christianity, but they were Christian people that came over here and founded this great nation that we have. And little by little, we learned to play the fiddle. We got away from God. We got away from the things of God, this nation. We became a whoremonging nation. We became, uh, we, we uh, allowed uh, institutions and things to, 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 to come to pass. They took the very words that we uh, uh, allowed for freedom, giving, giving people the freedom, and they used that freedom uh, to, to uh, go into uh, different lusts and different things in this country. We have a city in, out west, uh, San Francisco, a wicked country where they pass laws to allow the most perverse and terrible things to take place in this country. Uh, how can God allow these things to go come to pass and not punish them for it? I remember years ago, hearing Billy Graham say that if God does not punish San Francisco and those people there, he's going to have to apologize for Sodom and Gomorrah. And I think that God is patiently waiting for uh, people to come and to repent. This is the position of God, that God, here we read, uh, we've read here uh, where Ezekiel says that God says, do I have any pleasure in men uh, uh, dying? and men going to hell. No, God doesn't have any pleasure in that. Verse 25, Yet ye say, The way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal, and are not your ways unequal? 
Now 26, when a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he hath done shall he die. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness, which he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive, because he has considered and turned away from all his transgressions that he hath committed. He shall surely live, he shall not die. And so this was the very word that John the, ba uh, John the Baptist was standing on, these very things, that if you repent of your sin and come to God and put away the iniquity in your life, that God will honor you and give you life. And so here was the message. We have this very message. I believe this is what John was preaching. Yet saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal, and are not your ways unequal? And in verse 30 it says, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourself from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be in your ruin. 31, cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourself and live ye. Here in verse 31, it says that make you a new heart and a new spirit. And this is the born-again message that would come out of John's message when Jesus began to preach. Jesus preached repentance also. And that, remember the story of the, uh, the uh, Pharisee who came to Jesus, a man named Nicodemus. And Jesus told uh, Nicodemus, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There's got to be a change in your heart a change in your being. Otherwise, you cannot come into the kingdom of God. It starts with repentance. It comes with a new heart. Another verse that we're going to look at is it also in Ezekiel, in Ezekiel, in uh, chapter uh, 36. Let me turn to that. In chapter 36 and verse uh, 24. Now, this particular verse and uh, verses here is dealing with, with how that God is going to bring Israel back into their homeland. This is a great prophecy. But inside the prophecy is this great message of how that God would actually come and work in the heart of those who repent and those who turn their lives around. And starting with verse 24, it says, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. And so this is this, is this uh, spiritual prophecy of them returning. But now look at 25. Then I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Now, here is the cleansing by water, a cleansing and sprinkling by water. And I uh, have a distiller in my house, and my, the distiller has clean water in it. But it's only 99.9% .9 clean. Still 1% that doesn't have that. There's something there that's not right. But this word here that God is speaking to people. It says, I will sprinkle clean water upon you. That clean water is a water that is totally uh, clean. It has absolutely nothing in it at all except uh, uh, for a cleansing, a clean water. And now verse 26, it says, A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. 
and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I give your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your God. And I will save you from all your uncleanliness and I will cause uh, and I will call for the corn and I will increase it upon and lay no famine upon you. Now look at this. The part that we're looking at here, there's two parts of the prophecy. One concerning the Israelite going back to the homeland, which has happened. They're back in their homeland and for uh, uh, over 2,000 years, they had not been called a nation, but now they are a nation. And, and the second part is this cleansing of the heart. It hasn't happened to the Israeli people yet. But I believe that this part of this prophecy applies to all those who have repented and come to him and he's going to sprinkle clean water upon you. Well, what is this clean water? Jesus said, unless you're born of the water and of the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Well, I've heard some people say, well, it's water baptism. That when you're, when you're washed in the water, that that cleanses you. Well, that's, I don't know if that water would be clean enough. huh? It says clean water. And I believe that the clean water is the precious word of God that comes to us and causes us, our hearts to change. You see, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so that when God in his graciousness has sent his son Jesus to this world who sacrificed himself for the sins of the world. And so God has established, God has established the way of salvation. God has established it through his son Jesus who gave his life. But there must be something done on your part. Some, well, the Bible says that not by works, but by grace and faith that we come to God. But this vehicle, the vehicle is faith. Now, God wants you to have faith, and God is going to sprinkle you with clean water. God is going to sprinkle you with clean water, and this clean water is going to cause you, your faith to grow, and then you're going to see the word of God, you're going to hear the word of God, and you're going to come to him. Then the Lord said that he would give us a new spirit, that he would, that he would put his spirit within us. This is a big, a big thing with some people. They get so disturbed over the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But did you know that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not that spirit that God is talking about? It's not that particular story or that particular thing. You see, Every person who comes to Christ, God immediately washes him with his word and then fills him, the spirit comes within him. But this baptism of the Holy Spirit is an event that takes place afterward, okay? So the, the, spirit, the spirit falling upon those people in the New Testament was after they believed and after they were baptized in water, so... Uh, we know that that when uh, someone is baptized in water, they're already saved. You don't baptize unsaved people. And how when you're saved, that's when God washes you, and that's when God brings his spirit within you, okay? So this event of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, is a legitimate event that happens after you give your heart to Christ. That's something that happens. doesn't happen with everybody because for one of two reasons. Either, number one, people don't want it, want no part of it. They've been taught, oh, we don't get that. That's not, you know, that's not of us. That's not for us today, you know. And then there's some people who don't seek that. Jesus said that uh, 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 being evil as you are, you know how to give good gifts to your children. And Christmas has just gone by. Even the most evil of people will go out and buy a gift and give a gift to their children. Being evil as you are, you know how to give good gifts to your children. And Jesus said, in the next verse, Jesus said, How much more will the Heavenly Father 
give the Holy Ghost to those who ask for it. Okay? Those who ask for it. So if you want something from God, ask him for it. Ask him for it. And God will give it to you. But my message this morning is not about the spiritual birth or the spiritual baptism, but about repenting and coming to God. Because if you come to him, you've got to come with a clean heart. You've got to lay it out before him. You can't hold anything back. The Bible says in one place, it says uh, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. He's faithful and just to forgive us. And then it says that, and he will wash us with his blood. Wash us. In other words, that it is through the blood of Jesus Christ and only that blood that allows us to come into the kingdom of God. And so this morning, uh, uh, I'm speaking here from the Gospel of Matthew, in chapter 3, and we've spoke about this John the Baptist coming, and it says, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness. And we still have people today who need to hear the word of God. There is a great wilderness out there, and that there are many people, many, many people, who have heard about Jesus, but they have not really heard about the salvation that God has for them. And let's uh, take the opportunity this year to present to others this great message. We may not be able to be a preacher. Or some of us are not, don't have that, that way about us that we, can, that we can speak to people, but you can live it. You can live that life that will, people will look at and say, that's what I want. That's the kind of life I want. And so you can present Christ by how you live also. Uh, the Bible says, um, he that believeth in his heart and confesses with his mouth, the Lord Jesus shall be saved. And so we confess with our mouth by our, uh, our living and by our speech, we confess Jesus. Amen. Let's Stand together, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Watch over us, we pray. Keep us in your way and in your will. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you from sin are longing to be free, look to the Lamb of God. He to redeem you, died
and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never, never die, shall never, never die. Resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never, never die, shall never, never things have been to me since I gave my heart to Jesus. Things are different now. I am changed. It must 
must be since I gave my heart to Him. Things I loved before have passed away. Things I love far more are here to stay. Things are different now. Some things happen to me since I gave my heart to Him. Oh, what He's done for me. Oh, what He's done for me. Oh, what He's done for me. I never shall forget what he's done for me. He saved my soul and he made me whole, that's what he's done for me. He saved my soul and he made me whole, that's what he's done for me. He saved my soul and he made me whole, that's what he's done for me. I never shall forget what he's done for me. Oh, what he's done for me. Oh, what he's done for me. Oh, what he's done for me. I never shall forget what he's done for me. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. That's what he's done for me. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. That's what he's done for me. He filled me with the Holy Ghost, that's what He's done for me. I never shall forget what He's done for me. Jesus is the only way. He's the only name you'll hear on that day. will you bring when you stand before the King? Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way. And He walked upon the water one sweet day. blind and lame, all glory to his name. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only way. He's the truth and the life I'm here to say. life for me on the cross of Calvary. Jesus is the only way. He's the only way, folks. We'd like to uh, uh, thank you all for watching the Old Country Church, and uh, we hope that you've had a wonderful year this year in the Lord, and we pray that God will give you a wonderful year in the coming year to serve the Lord. We don't know if he's coming soon, but if the Lord tarries, we just pray for a good year the coming year.